हेलो ओके वी विल गेट स्टार्टेड विथ प्रोजेक्शन थ्योरम So what is a projection? Projection of Z onto the set. Uh, I should actually write convex set, convex closed set, capital X. Z plus. As we discussed in the previous class, a projection of a point Z onto the convex set capital X is a point within the set that is at a minimum distance with Z as compared to all the other points within the set. Okay, so I have a convex set and I have a point Z I want to find a point within this set capital X. I want to find a point within this capital uh, within this set capital X which is closest to Z which is going to be this point. That's the point that is closest to Z and still lies in the set capital X. What we are going to do first is we will learn some properties of the projection. So what exactly does this point satisfy? This is my Z plus. That's this point. What kind of properties does this point satisfy? And once I understand those properties, perhaps I can exploit it to come up with projection onto sets, onto some commonly used convex sets closed convex sets, okay? So that's the roadmap for today. Um, so let's study, let's try to understand uh, what all properties would this point satisfy? Let me write this as my Z plus and let me write down what the properties are on this side. Theorem. The first result is for every Z in Rn, there exists a unique projection, unique point Z plus that satisfies that minimizes that minimizes Z minus X two square over x in x, unique point.
let's look at this particular set do you think there is any other point within the set with which the distance is exactly this much that's the minimum distance okay that's that's the minimum distance do we have any other point within the set which has the same distance as this one no this is the unique point this is the unique point within this set capital x over which this distance is minimized and that's what the first result is saying no matter what convex set you pick no matter what point in rn you pick so this z is in rn there is a unique point within the set that minimizes z minus x square the two norm of z minus x over that set capital x let's look at the second result so x star in capital x satisfies x star equals to z plus if and only if if and only if x minus x star transpose z minus x star is less than or equal to 0 for all x in capital x okay so a point in the set capital x is projection of z if and only if x minus x star transpose z minus x star is less than or equal to 0 for all x in capital x so no matter which point x i pick within the set capital x this relationship will be satisfied let's look at a closer look at this particular relationship what does it mean for a vector transpose another vector to be less than or equal to zero what does it tell you about the angle between those two vectors when is the inner product of two vectors negative or, or non-positive angle is greater than 90 degrees right so this is my z minus x star and I'm going to pick any other point within this set x and I have x minus x star which is this vector and z minus x star which is this vector so the vector of course has a direction right so I'm, I'm drawing that direction of the vector so I have this vector that's going from x star towards z. I have another vector that goes from x star towards x. So, so x minus x star is this vector. And z minus x star is this particular vector. And I look at the angle between them. And I do notice that the angle is actually greater than 90 degrees. And therefore, their inner product must be less than or equal to zero okay but it goes both ways it goes both ways in the sense that if you can find a point such that this condition holds for all x in x you are guaranteed to be at the projection of z onto the set capital x okay so it's an if and only if relationship I pick another point x let's not pick this point let me pick something at the boundary let me pick another point x 
Then the other point is, the other vector is x minus x star is going to be this. And the two vectors are actually exactly 90 degrees with each other. And so in that case, the inner product is going to be equal to 0. So this condition is satisfied for, for all the points within that set capital X. OK. The third result is if I look at two points, and I look at their projection, and I look at the distance between the projection, that's less than equal to z1 minus z2. This is, of course, two norm that we are talking about. So let's see what this result is saying. I have two points, Z1 and Z2, both of which are in Rn. And I'm going to project both these points onto this set, OK? So Z1 gets projected to this particular point. So let me call this uh, Z1 plus. Z2 gets projected to this point, And this is Z2 plus. What the third statement is saying is that the distance between the projection is less than equal to the distance between the original points. So let's see. This is the distance between the original points. This is the distance between the projection. right? And that condition is met. That equation is satisfied. And in fact, it's true globally. No matter which two points in the space you pick, Projection is a non-expansive operation. So this is known as a non-expansive operation. You operate on the point, and you look at the distance between the points. It's less than or equal to the distance between the original points. OK, so this is non-expansive. Non-expansive operation. OK. The fourth result is for a specific class of convex sets. So let's say my capital X is AX equal to 0, the set of all X such that AX is equal to 0. And this is known as a subspace. OK, so I'm now considering a very special class of convex sets, which is a subspace. So let me draw a subspace. So this is my three-dimensional uh, space, R3. And I have a set that looks like this. So that set is actually going to look something like so this is my set capital X. So this entire hyperplane, and it's passing through the origin. So the origin is on the hyperplane itself. This is a subspace. And I have a point Z in the space R3. 
and I'm going to project that onto this hyperplane. That's my Z plus. One of the things you will notice is if I pick any point x within this space, what is the vector x? The vector x is actually this vector. And let me also call it x star. So this point. is x star or, or z plus, it's the projection of z. What do you think is the relationship between z minus x star, which is this vector, and the vector capital, the, the vector x, which is any point within the space capital X? Okay, so that's the fourth theorem that we will be talking about, but think about it, think about what condition would be satisfied by this vector and this vector. What's the inner product of this vector times this vector? Orthogonal. They are orthogonal. Why are they orthogonal? I'm assuming this uh, vector is perpendicular to the plane. Correct. This vector is perpendicular to the plane, right? And this vector x is in the plane, and it could be in any direction. It doesn't matter this vector z minus x star is actually perpendicular to the vector x. And that's the fourth result, which is x star is a projection if and only if z minus x star transpose x is equal to 0 for all x in capital X. Okay, so z minus x star is orthogonal to every vector in the subspace. No matter which vector you pick, z minus x star is going to be orthogonal to that vector. The only thing I want you to remember, so this is known as the projection theorem. The one thing that's the most important part of projection theorem is you're always minimizing the L2 norm. So even though in the beginning of the semester we were talking about all different types of norm on Rn, the projection specifically uses L2 norm for projection. You cannot use any of the other norms in Rn. It has to be L2 norm uh, for projection. So it's L2 norm. And all these conditions are satisfied by projection. In particular, the non-expansive operation is again, uh, it only holds for the L2 norm. It won't hold for any of the other norms of Rn that you may have studied. Yes, please. So this subspace is R3, so that means that it is in a particular place with three angles with x, y, and z, the whole subspace. So if I pick a point which is along this subspace, right. outside of this convex axis, then not necessarily this subspace yes. would be zero. But then it's not a subspace, it's a linear variety. If oh. you move this plane up or down, if it's not passing through the origin, it's not a subspace any longer. Oh, okay. it's, it's called what is known as a hyperplane or a linear variety. Both of them are... Uh, mathematical way to talk about such a plane that's not passing through the origin, okay? 
Any other question? Okay. All of you are convinced that these results hold, right? So we had a pictorial description of each of these results. And uh, I'm not going to go through the proof. The proof is pretty long and convoluted. But uh, we'll jump right into projection for different types of sets. So I'm going to erase everything now. Okay, so now I want to talk about projections onto different types of sets. Okay. So what are the different convex sets? So let's start with uh, sphere. Sphere is a nice convex set. It's, it's round. This is my sphere. And this is my point Z. This is origin. What is the projection of Z onto the sphere? Sphere is the whole set. Everything including the, the interior of this, this circle. Everything is part of the sphere. So what's the projection of Z? Uh, let me write the radius. The radius is R. And the set is X such that norm of X is less than equal to R. So the two norm of X is less than equal to R. So it's a unit sphere but with L2 norm. No, sorry, not a unit sphere. A sphere of radius R under the L2 norm. Okay, so let's, let's think about it. I'm going to join Z with the origin, with the center of the sphere. And I'm claiming that this is going to be my projection. Okay, That's going to be my projection because it satisfies the second statement. No matter which other point x I pick, this angle is always going to be an obtuse angle. It's going to be greater than 90 degrees or equal to 90 degrees. So this point is my projection z plus so can someone tell me what the expression should look like R times Z over 2 norm of Z. If the norm of Z is greater than or equal to R, and it's Z if norm of Z less than or equal to R. Okay. So do you think projecting onto a sphere is a complicated operation? No, I think it's uh, fairly straightforward. Even if I have a million dimensional vector, I can do this operation in like very small amount of time. Right? Computing the norm, the two norm of a vector is not that complicated. 
So it's it's very easy operation. It's easy to compute projection onto a sphere. Okay. Let's consider the any question on this before I move on to the next set? Okay. Let's consider a positive orthend. So my x is equal to x such that x is greater than equal to 0. That's my positive orthend. I have a point z that I want to project onto the set. And I think you will all agree that this is the point uh, x star. That's the projection of z onto the set. OK, so what's the projection operation here? Actually, I'm going to write it as x star i is equal to, so x star i, the ith component of x star is equal to z i if z i is greater than equal to 0 and it's 0 if z i is less than 0. So that's my projection. X star is the projection here. And it has i components. And I look at individual components. If it is non-negative, I let it be. If it is less than 0, I switch it. I mean, I change it to 0. That's the projection onto a positive quadrant or positive orthend. Is this a complicated operation? Not at all. OK? Easy peasy projection. Now let's look at the third set. Any question on this before I move on to the third set? OK. The third set is a box constraint. So x is the set of all x such that a is less than x is less than b. And I want to project a point onto the set. So I have a point Z. And it gets projected to X star on the set. I have a box constraint and I want to project a point onto the box. So my xi star will be equal to ai if zi is greater than ai. It's equal to zi if ai is less than equal to zi is less than equal to bi. No, zi is less than equal to less than ai. And then it's bi if zi is greater than bi. That's projection onto a box set. This is also not a complicated operation. Even if I have a million dimensional vector, I can do this projection in fraction of a second.
Any question on this one? How do you prove that these are the points, these are the projections of the thing? So you, you always have to remember that x minus x star transpose z minus x star has to be less than or equal to 0. So what you can show is if you pick your x star according to this fashion, this statement always holds for all x in capital X. And that's how you prove that x star is a projection. So of course the first person who came up with this projection had to spend a lot of time thinking about it. But once you get that expression for xi star, all you have to do is plug it in here and check whether it's less than or equal to zero or not for all x. And, and you know, some of, in some of these cases, it's very easy to do that. Okay, any other, any question on this? No? Let's talk about projection onto a subspace. This is going to be a slightly more complicated uh, problem. So I have a subspace AX equal to zero. This is my and I want to minimize X in capital X, X minus let me say x plus c square. So my z here is minus c. I want to minimize, I want to project z onto the set capital X. So according to the projection, the fourth uh, theorem, the projection theorem part four implies x star equals to z plus if and only if, what was the condition? Z minus x star transpose z minus x star transpose x equal to 0 for all x in capital X. So z here is minus c. So this is the same as c plus x star transpose x equal to 0 for all x in capital X. So I've taken the negative sign out and I've canceled it because it's zero on the right hand side. So I've just rewritten the whole expression in a simplest possible fashion. Okay, it, does, it still doesn't feel like I, I'm not sure what value of x star should I pick so that this condition would be satisfied. But it looks very complicated. It looks complicated. So here is a genie. Genie said, I'm going to pick x star is equal to minus i minus a transpose A, A transpose inverse 
AC. So a genie said that pick your X star in this fashion. I don't know where he came up with this expression, but that's what he said. So all we have to do is check whether this X star satisfies that expression or not. Okay. Right, this is identity, A transpose, A, A transpose inverse A multiplied by C. There is a negative sign in front as well. This one? No, this is not because this is A transpose on this side and A on the other side. So matrix multiplication is not commutative. So this is not equal to A transpose on the other side. Oh, so A is not a full rank matrix. A is just, yeah, so A is R M cross N, where M is much, much smaller than N. Okay. So this is what my uh, genie has said, that this is my X star. So let me try to, let me try to, uh, put it in this equation and see if this is correct. So what is C plus X star? <coughs> so that's C minus C plus A transpose A, A transpose inverse A, C. Okay, so the C minus C gets canceled. Now what is C plus X star transpose X? That is C transpose A transpose A A transpose inverse A, A times X. What is this equal to? So I'm looking at, so th this is what it's supposed to satisfy. So C plus X star transpose X must be equal to zero for all X that satisfies AX equal to zero, okay? Now I wrote the expression for C plus X star, X star transpose X and I have this uh, long expression, but I only have to check that this expression is equal to zero for all X such that AX is equal to zero and you will notice that I have AX term here, which is equal to zero for all X, such that AX is equal to zero. So this is zero, and therefore, this statement is satisfied by this X star. So Gini was right. So the projection of minus C, projection of minus C onto the set AX equal to zero is given by this expression. So it's a matrix multiplied by C. Is this a complicated procedure? Is this a complicated procedure? So it really depends on what the dimensionality of A is, okay? So I have to take AA transpose inverse 
So even if my n is a million dimensional, if m is 100 dimensional, I can do this inverse without any problem. On the other hand, if m is, n is a million dimensional and m is a 100,000 dimensional, this becomes a very complicated affair and I won't be able to do the projection. So, so depends, it depends whether A is a, is a, like has fewer number of rows or has large number of rows. If A has fewer number of rows, I can do the projection, no problem. If A has large number of rows, I can't really do the projection in this case. Okay, so, so that's a drawback with projecting onto a subspace. The other thing to notice is a has to be full rank because if A is full rank, A A transpose is invertible. If A is not full rank, we have a problem here. We can't really invert it. But it also means that you have some redundant constraints. You can remove some of the constraints in A X equal to zero and still be able to con continue with the optimization. Okay. Now let's consider projecting onto the set AX less than or equal to B. I have a point Z. I want to project it onto the set AX less than or equal to B. Now this is really difficult. So in this case, you actually have to solve the optimization problem to project it. So you literally have to solve, minimize half z minus x square such that ax is less than or equal to b. So you have to solve this optimization problem to get the projection. There is no closed form expression as we had in the other cases for projecting onto a set of type ax is less than or equal to b. Okay, so depending on the convex set, sometimes it's easier to do the projection, sometimes it's difficult to do the projection, and sometimes it's literally an optimization problem that you need to solve uh, to, to get the projection. Yeah. Any what? Closed form. Close form, no, there's no closed form result for this, this case. Okay. So of course we saw two cases. One is A is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to B, which can also be written in this form. So that would be uh, identity and minus identity X less than or equal to B and minus A, right? So that's uh, this case. And the other case was X greater than or equal to zero which is equivalent to minus i x less than or equal to zero. So for these two cases, we have the closed form result, right? But for this general case where A is some matrix, it becomes a bit, uh, I mean, not a bit difficult. It's literally you have to solve the optimization problem. But for these two cases, we have the closed form result. And actually the projection is a very easy operation in those two cases. Okay. Yes, please. What, is, what if A is not full rank? What if A is? The rank of A is less than M, say M minus 1. Here? Yeah. Then what do we do? Uh, is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it means that there are some redundant constraints. Let me show you by an example. So his question is, I said that if A is rank M, I can do this inversion and everything works fine. But what happens if A is doesn't have rank M, then what do we do? And my argument is in those situations, you have redundant constraints which you can totally remove without changing the optimization problem. So let me show you how, through a very simple example. So I want to solve this problem. 
such that ax is equal to 0, right? So let me pick my A matrix as 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. So it's a rank 1 matrix. But we see that what is the first constraint saying? So this constraint is saying x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. The second constraint is saying x2 minus x1 is equal to 0. I can literally remove one of the constraint and not change the optimization problem itself. Right? So I can just delete this constraint completely from the optimization problem. And I still retain the original nature, the original optimization problem. <clears throat> without any difficulty. So A, rank A less than M implies there exist redundant constraints. So you have to remove that redundant constraint from the expression so that you can do the optimization. Okay. Any other question? So solving this minimization problem in, in, in every iteration until you get inside the set. Right, right. right. So, so you go through this. Correct, correct. So the algorithms, which we will not go into today because the time is up, but the algorithm, remember, the gradient descent algorithm said, hey, look, take the negative gradient of fx, multiply it by a positive definite matrix, take a step in that direction. Now, when we are doing optimization over convex set, I am constrained, I cannot really go out of the set. So what I need to do is project myself back onto the set uh, while taking the gradient steps, okay? So gradient descent steps. So the algorithm that we will talk about for solving optimization over convex sets would involve um, taking a gradient step and then projecting back onto the set, then taking a gradient step, then projecting myself back onto the set. So that's how we'll proceed with gradient descent algorithm, sorry, with the gradient projection algorithm. So it's called gradient projection algorithm. And then we'll talk about some specialized algorithms for linear programming problem called manifold suboptimization method, where we will originally have this problem, but we will come up with a clever way to get around this difficulty of solving this uh, minimization problem over the entire space. Uh, through a, some, some clever way, we will we'll figure out how to get around it. Uh, so not having this projection step at every moment, but have a simpler projection step at every moment. So we'll talk about those algorithms in the subsequent classes. The important announcement is uh, on Wednesday, there is no class. As I had uh, explained earlier, I have a meeting that I need to attend uh, in the university. So on Wednesday, we are not meeting. We'll meet on Friday, and I'll talk about various algorithms for solving optimization problems over convex set. So thank you for your attention. See you on uh, Friday.